Well, good evening, good people and Eagle fans. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. Um, not too much going on with the Cowboys today other than... Um, we know that Brandon Cooks is done as far as Oxnard goes. Um, undisclosed reason, um, Mike McCarthy basically said it's a good reason. He'll be going uh, and meeting the team back when they go back to Dallas after the last preseason game. And the Cowboys are actually staying out in Oxnard longer than usual. And I'm thinking part of that is because they don't want to um, wear out their field and stuff. At, in Dallas, and it's hot as shit in Dallas. Might as well enjoy the cool weather that is in Oxnard and try and get in as much work as possible. Now, the Eagles got a bit of a scare today, okay? The Eagles had um, Saquon Barkley um, was on the ground with trainers rubbing his back. Let me read exactly what happened. <clears throat> Eagles are just days away from their final preseason game and just over two weeks away from their season opener in Brazil. Now is not now is not the best time to be dealing with injuries, especially to guys like Saquon Barkley. The running back has had an injury scare during Tuesday's practice with a trainer stretching him as he laid down on the sidelines. Barkley remained on the sidelines, but the running back never returned to the field to team's drills the rest of the practice. So, Barkley is on the ground getting stretched out by a trainer during Eagles special team's drills. They're also rubbing his lower back. The fact that he stayed and the guys didn't take or retreat to the locker room is a good sign and hopefully means it's just a minor thing that can be worked out. Barkley is post poised for a big year and to be a big part of the Eagles offense. So having him available is going to be very important. So, um, and if that, if Barkley's injury wasn't enough, rookie Trevor Kagan, yet another offensive line, O lineman left the field early and is headed inside with trainers. Right guard Malik Bakton returned to practice on Tuesday after severing his own issue on Sunday. So, you know, everybody is getting a little nicked up in training camp. Eagles, hey, you, you're not, you know, immune to it as well. And, you know, everybody is one play away from major things happening. So, this time yesterday, Social media was going crazy about C.D. Lamb and his Superman post, which has since petered into absolutely nothing. Nothing's changed. The Joneses are still seeming to be waiting and just doing what they do, which is absolutely nothing. And C.D., he doesn't seem to be blinking either. It's like we're playing a game of chicken. I hope... That this doesn't end up being like Emmett Smith point two. Oh. Because you both need each other. This is ridiculous that we haven't gotten it done. I'm curious what they had to say on Get Up about it. Um, I've been out, out and about and stuff, so I'm just getting caught up just like you guys. Oh. Je uh, Jeff, Dak Prescott, 29 and a half passing TDs, more or less. So I'm going to say more, obviously, under the caveat that CeeDee Lamb is playing at wide receiver. But he had 36 this last season, 37 in 2021. I think sometimes lost in all of the drama and the narratives that exist with the Cowboys, we sometimes forget how productive Dak Prescott often is. Sometimes maybe even forget that he was really an MVP leader at one point this past season. As long as CeeDee Lamb is on the field, I do believe he will have more than 29.5 touchdowns. <laughs> Well, if he's going to have more than that, then C.D. Lamb does have to be on the field. Shannon Sharp was on first oh, take I'm yesterday sorry. talking about Jerry Jones. And, man, Unc, he ain't hold back on what he had to say. For Jerry to try to downplay, oh, we don't need, C we don't need C.D. out here risking it. Really? And you expect yeah, people to believe that? No, that's not the case. You think that everybody wants to play for the Cowboys. You think everybody's going to give you a hometown discount. I don't give a damn about your cap. The only cap I care about is the cap that's on my head that's going to have dollar signs because I'm about to get a bunch of it out of you, Jerry Jones. If I'm C.D. Lamb, I'm towing the line. I'm not giving you no discount. I want a boatload of money up front. 
You're not going to backload it and push it to later you kick the can down the Damn. road. I want my money. Jeff, why does a deal that feels like it should be easy to me seem so different from these other wide receiver situations? Well, quite honestly, I, I don't have the answer for you because it does feel like this should be done. I would only, I'll only point this out when it comes to the leverage. And this is maybe where we can get into the fact that it, 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 both sides feel like they have leverage right now. The Cowboys feel like every minute that they get toward week one is a minute closer to getting this deal done because CeeDee Lamb will recognize he's got to get his game checks. And that's when he's going to have to really start facing those stiff penalties. Forget the fines that he's incurring right now. Let's talk about that week one game check. CeeDee Lamb's looking at it saying though, yeah, your Super Bowl aspirations are toast if I'm not on the field. So sometimes the problem with these negotiations are if that leverage continues to just like feel mm -hmm. dead even 50-50 down the middle, that's when nobody blinks. That's what it feels like right now with CeeDee Lamb and the Cowboys. So I I'm still just waiting. Who's going to blink first? Nick, when you hear some of Jerry Jones's statements, you know, early on in training camp it's saying stupid. that Dak's practicing, he's different from other guys. Also saying, I'm in no rush to get CD's deal done. And now he's like, hey, we don't want him out here getting hurt anyway. How has the Dallas Cowboys approach to this situation played into this standoff? It doesn't make sense because nobody can name me a time when they've won a negotiation standoff. They lose them all and you end up paying everybody all the money that they want eventually. All they do is fuel our program in the offseason. So I appreciate that Jerry has been such a bad contract negotiator with his players because it gives us something to talk about. But the bottom line is CD going to get top of the league a receiver money. Whether it's now or later, he's going to get it because he's a top of the league receiver. Dak, the same thing. It's going to happen. The price just keeps going up. So while I understand why Jeff is saying that the leverage changes a little bit, it doesn't change that much as long as mm -hmm. CD remains steadfast and knows that he is going to get how much he That's deserves. Right. No matter what it is, he's going to get it. So he just has to be patient. And the reality is, like, he's the owner of the football team. If he wants to get a deal done with his number one wide receiver, he can get it done. And, like, I... I just feel like, and I think this is part of what Nick is saying in terms of the negotiations, like they've played hardball with guys in the past. Guys have stared them down, and and the players have won in some of these negotiations. Almost like always. Dak Prescott, you know, counts more against the salary cap this year than the four highest paid Philadelphia Eagles players this year. Like Jerry Jones has been cheap negotiating with some of his own players. And it has been screwed. If it were the Cincinnati Bengals or the Arizona Cardinals, everybody would be talking about how cheap the organization is, but for whatever reason, you get a star in your helmet and you know, you're basically, you know, trying to to get it. Yeah, we'll just leave it right there. The thing is is Jerry Jones, it's it's not just the players. It's nothing personal. It's just the way they treat everybody. Everybody employees fans players they ain't spending no money they are just cheap and they're gonna nickel and dime you and try and get out every cent it's just the way it is so the only way you win in this one is playing hardball with them and have a commodity that they need all right good people i'll catch you guys on the flip side peace out